Man, is it great. Feels great to be back along the marshes here. Took a little bit of a hiatus, so to speak, uh, for a little bit from doing nature photography. And man, sometimes that's all it takes is a little bit of a break to get that spark flying again. Yeah, feels good. There's a juvenile bald eagle that keeps flying around. I got a couple of pictures of them perched up, up there in the tree. They're so beautiful birds, but they're hard to get uh, because they, they have the eagle eye, man. <laughs> and they, they just spot you a mile away. Even if you're probably covered in camo head to toe, they'll still see you. The juveniles will have the patchy brown mix and uh, they don't get their full bloomage, white bloomage, until about five years. There's the eagle again. Here's a little trick. Keep spare batteries, uh, like in your pockets or in, up in here somewhere where they stay warm or even if you're wearing gloves in the winter time, keep one or two of them in your gloves. Uh, that way, you're not having to fumble through your backpack and get the batteries out when your battery runs out for your camera. You could be missing a shot, like I do. Also, once we get some snow out here, <laughs> uh, I got, white snowsuit to uh, cover myself and my uh, backpack, just so maybe we can be a little bit more discreet and camouflaged out here with the snow, trying to get the ducks. If we would get some snow. Let me know if you got some snow in your area. We might not even have a white Christmas here. It's not looking too promising. So woodpecker just going at it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they gotta have some strong brains. So there are three easy, simple composition chips, 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 chips sounds good right now. Tips, <laughs> composition tips uh, that I wanna share with you guys. And the very first one is just be adaptable to your surroundings because a lot of the times the weather changes really quick out here. Uh, the subjects can change really quick out here. There's really so much that we just have no control over uh, when it comes to wildlife photography. So be willing to be adaptable to your surroundings and have patience too. And that's just something I'm very bad at. Be willing to learn to have patience and perseverance as well. Uh, because patience and perseverance out in nature wildlife photography are completely two different things. Patience is just being able to sit for a very long time waiting for the shot. Perseverance is going time and time again even when we don't get a shot. Being able to have that uh, perseverance to keep shooting and keep coming out for wildlife photography. Ah, really? Come on. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Nothing like wet pants in 32 degrees. And the second easy tip for composition is just watching your backgrounds. This one is very difficult for me too as well, um, but the background should complement 
the subject, not distract away from the subject. Sometimes that just means stepping a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, and uh, just changing that background completely. If it's a distracting background, um, it just doesn't look pleasing to the eye. If there's a bird, a small bird, like uh, in the bushes or something like that, it just doesn't make for a really good composition. Just having a blown out sky, even. Having a blown out sky sometimes just looks better than a very cluttered uh, and very busy background. Definitely not easy when it's very difficult to get close to the wildlife. That's for sure. I understand, guys, as you get older, it's not getting down. That's the hard part. It's getting back up. Another easy composition tip is just it's okay. It's okay to not have the subject in full and frame. Uh, sometimes it looks better and it just tells a different story if, say, the subject, whatever bird or animal you're photographing, is partially blocked by some brush, uh, a tree, whatever the case may be, any, any type of uh, landscape. Uh, it just adds to the story that you want to tell. You don't always have to go for that uh, perfect headshot, the perfect portrait shot, uh, or just having the subject completely fill the frame. Sometimes it's best to just zoom out a little bit and try to get a little bit of the brush and uh, blocking the body. It just tells a different story. And ultimately that's what we're trying to do, is tell a different story. Be unique, be different. Express the creativity and the artist that's inside of you. Being a photographer is not just about sharing our artwork and sharing uh, our journey, but it's also remembering our journey and remembering having those photos uh, to look back on and be inspired by and remember those trips as we get older in life, later in life that we can look back on and uh, be like, you know what, that was a fun time. I remember that. I remember when I captured that shot. I remember what I had to go through to capture that shot because that's truly what this whole hobby is all about. Being inspired and being an artist. I am losing light fairly fast, so but man, it was good. It was so good and refreshing to get back out here after taking a short hiatus. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy those couple of photographs that I was able to take. Much more adventures coming forward. Bringing something a little different and unique to the photography community and doing some day camps and stuff like that out of the Jeep. There is a really cool lighthouse that is not too far from my house right along the lakeshore. And uh, so we'll try to get out there and do some nature photography as well and uh, do, some, do a little bit of camping out there outside of the back of the Jeep. It's great to be back, guys. It's great to be back out here shooting photography. Uh, there's nothing better than enjoying nature. So until the next video, take care. God bless. Remember to get out into nature and enjoy that opportunity that is in front of you. There's no such thing as a bad photograph, only a missed opportunity. Take care, guys. God bless. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next adventure. Peace out.